Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at another one of my favorite applications, and this one is for iOS, and that is Plotograph Plus. Now, Plotograph Plus is a newer application. In fact, uh, right now they have a launch sale where it's 50% off the retail price. And what Plotograph Plus does is it allows you to add animation to your photographs. And so if you've ever seen those time-lapse photo, uh, photos where the sky is moving and uh, it's got motion and action in it, uh, if, you, if you're if you not able to have the equipment, equipment to set up that time-lapse and do the edit, this application actually does that for you and does it in a pretty simple way. And so it's a really great application. I've been playing with it for a while, and so I thought I'd share it with you, especially for those of you that uh, like to play with your photographs. So let's go ahead and tap into this. I'm just going to say open, and let's open Plotograph for the first time. And so here we are in the Plotograph interface, and it's a pretty simple interface. You can see we've got uh, buttons down on the bottom. I've also got a little uh, triangle at the top left. If I tap on that, you'll see that it gives me information on the application and some stuff with support and all of that. So I'll just go ahead and close that. Uh, but down in the bottom is where we end up working. And so if I if I just tap the eye down there, the eye will give us uh, these little tags that tell us what each of the buttons do. You can see there's a tutorial button to the left. If I just tap on that, it takes us into a tutorial that walks us through how to animate the sky, uh, for instance, and use the animation tools. And then it kind of walks through all of the different buttons that are down below and the different uh, actions that you can take. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, close that and tap off that. Uh, the other thing we can do is you can take a photo uh, with your iPad or iPhone and then drop it right into Plotograph if you want to. That's what the camera icon does. And then if you just tap over to the right there, you'll get some sample photos that are put together uh, by, the, by other artists that you can actually use and play with and animate and get an idea for how that works. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to tap off of that to close it. So let me show you how this works. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, tap the plus down here, and the plus will take me into my library that I've got on my iPad. I'm just going to go into favorites here, and let me just scroll all the way up to the top here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a photograph right here and load this one, and I'll show you how this works. So here's a photograph that I took. Uh, you know, it's over in Mono Lake, and so it's a nice photo, and the sky is pretty dynamic in this one. And so I thought, let's let's animate that and make that sky move a little bit and see if we can't uh, make that look a lot better. Now, if you look down on the bottom, you see I've got this animate button. And what the animate button does is when I'm in animate mode, all I have to do is touch the screen and I can go with the contours of the clouds. So let's say I want to make the clouds move to the right. If I just kind of move with my finger, you can see I'm creating all these little uh, arrows there uh, where I want the uh, sky to move. And so I can you know, kind of just put those on there, and that's going to allow motion to happen. Now watch what happens when I tap the play button. You can see that not only is the sky moving, but so is the ground, right? So that's definitely not a, t a video that I'm going to want to put together, so I'm just going to tap pause here. So what I've got to do is I've got to make sure that the ground doesn't move with the sky. Now there's two ways that I can do that. I can do that with a mask, and so if I just tap on the brush here, you can see I get this brush icon, and I can determine the size, and I could go ahead and mask uh, all of the areas in here just by coloring over it and uh, masking the, uh, the stuff out. Or if I wanted to, I could come, and so if I did that, you can see I've got this mask area here, and if I just colored in here, anything that I'm coloring in would be masked and that wouldn't move. And so if I really wanted to do it with precision, you know, I could zoom in and just start to color out all this area so that that way it's not going to move with my sky. And just go in here and just kind of do this like this. Let me just kind of do it really rough to show you that I can use a mask to make this work. And then I could just, again, color all of this in, and, and uh, you get the idea there that I've just created a mask for my uh, actual photo here. And so let me, I'm just doing this with my finger now, coloring right over the whole thing. And so now I've created this mask, and so now we can try it out. Let's make sure I get that top there. And if I just hit play now, you can see that only the sky is moving, that my ground isn't moving. So that's one way that I can uh, create a mask and uh, set up my sky the way I want to. Now another way that I could do it, if I just uh, tap off of this for a minute, uh, I can tap erase, and, uh, or I can just do the undo and I can just go back through and undo that mask. So now I'm back at the beginning. Another way I can do it uh, simply is I can use what's called an anchor. And if I just tap on the anchor area right here, and all I, all I have to do is with my finger tap around, and you can see that I'm creating these little anchor points. And you can see the little red dots. And I can quickly kind of go through this landscape here 
and put in these little dots here. If I didn't want to do a, you know, a mask and work at coloring it, I can just kind of come along here and just put these little dots in. And what this is going to do is it tells me, and it tells me the boundary of where the motion can go. So when I put this in, there's no motion below where these little anchor points are. And if I just kind of come around here and tap all that in, now I've got those anchor points. Now if I tap on play, you can see, oops, I got a little area there that I didn't get the anchor just right. So let's make sure I'm anchoring all the holes in here. And let's try it again. Oops, still not quite there. So let's go ahead and make sure that I've created this complete space here. There we go. And now let's try it. And now you can see that the sky is only moving and the rest of the ground isn't moving there either. So again, that's another way that I can set that up so that things don't move. Now you'll notice on the right hand side there, I've got a little bit of uh, movement that doesn't look smooth. That's not quite what I want. So I'm just going to uh, pause here. And what I would probably do then is come in here and uh, erase or uh, select a couple of these little arrows that I put up there to get rid of. So if I just tap on the select uh, area here, I can even just kind of pinch to zoom. And I'm going to just select that particular arrow right there. Now, I could select it and shrink it and move it and change the direction of it. Or if you look on the left-hand side there, I can tap on delete and just get rid of that. So now that I've gotten rid of it, let's just go ahead and zoom back out and let's hit play for a minute. And I still got that little jittery stuff. So let me just pause it here. And that means that this other one over here is probably causing me problems as well. So let me just go ahead and delete that. And let's go ahead and play it again. And so, no, not quite there. So it means that this one's probably causing me problems. And you may have to play with it a little bit to figure out which one looks better. That looks a little more, a little smoother. Uh, you can still kind of tell some of that motion there is back and forth, but at least it looks a little smoother. Now, I don't want it to go as fast as this, so I'm going to go with the speed here. And I can choose the speed up or down. So if I just want the sky to move just a little bit more slowly... I can slide that down and now the sky is going to move a little bit more slowly there. And you can see I got a little jitter. If I go a little faster, you can see I get the sky moving faster. So I really have a choice as to how fast I want to make that go. Let's just go ahead and pause and stop there. Let's go ahead and zoom out. So I got a little jitter down here. So what I'm going to do is go back to select and I'm just going to delete that one right there and let's see if that doesn't help my jitter. Okay, so I eliminated a couple of those things there. Now if I just tap on play, you can see that now it looks a little bit better. That the clouds are moving and I don't have that jitter in there anymore. So let me just go ahead and tap pause. Uh, the other thing I can do, like I said, is uh, crop this as well. If I didn't just want to adjust the speed, I, can go, I could also crop it. And you can see I have different crop form factors that I can use to make this exactly the way I want. Um, and so that's how that works. And so if I, uh, if I want to, let me just go ahead and tap back on uh, select for a minute and just come back in here. And so now I've got my, my finished product. Now, a couple of things that I can do, um, I also have up in the top hand right, you can see this little gear icon, where I can do the settings here. I can choose the color of the animation tracks, the color of the mask, the color of the anchors, whether I want to use the Apple Pencil and use the pressure sensitivity. So you can use this with your Apple Pencil as well. Let me just tap that closed. When I'm done, I can go ahead and share it. If I just tap on share, I can choose to share it as an iMessage. I can set it as a PNG that way to social media. And at, or an email as a GIF or a text. And so uh, I can do any of those type of things and export it. And then I've got an animated photo that I can put places like Instagram, uh, Facebook, you know, those sorts of things. And I can save it right into my uh, photo library as well and have that available as a video. Uh, so that gives you an idea of how this application works. Like I said, it's a very simple application. Uh, it works really well. And uh, you can play with it with your photos and really bring them to life. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own Mac or software or need some troubleshooting help, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.